The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. You know, there was a there was a doctor, very well educated doctor, non-religious Jew, who lived in a small town called Slutsk. He was walking by the butcher shop. It was already later on in the afternoon, he was on his way home, and he sees that there are people lining up to get into the butcher shop, customers. And the butcher, from all people, were pushing him out the door. And he was screaming at them, I can't sell you meat now. Come back in an hour. Not now. I got to go to pray. The doctor's hearing this. And he's, he's thinking to himself, well, what, what type of poor excuse is that not to sell people meat? The doctor gets all worked up. And he actually walks into the butcher shop and he starts giving a whole argument to the butcher. And the doctor says to the butcher, what did you tell those people? Why aren't you selling the meat? I mean, they're, they're telling you it's Arab Shabbat, it's Thursday night. If they don't get the meat now, how are they going to cook for Shabbat? And you're telling them what? You can't sell the meat because you've got to go pray in Khan Arbit. But this is your parnasah. Your parnasah comes before anything else. Does that line sound familiar to anybody? Your parnasah comes before anything else. So you miss a minchan arbi, but it was for the bigger picture. Parnasah. Isn't parnasah mitzvah, Rabbi? It depends who you believe in. The butcher got so moved that he turns to the doctor and he says to him, Doctor, please, understand. My parnasah is from Hashem. I'm more worried about my olam haba. I'm more worried about my relationship with God Himself. And because of that, I'm pushing the people out and I'm not selling them meat now. I'm going to Minchan Arbit. And if they want, they can come back in an hour and they can buy to their heart's content. But right now, what's on my mind is my Olam Haba and my relationship with God. I'm going to pray Minchan Arbit. The doctor was like, so, psh, look at this guy. So unrealistic. So he starts degrading the butcher and mocking the butcher. Ha! Olam Haba. What Olam Haba? There is no Olam Haba. This world is what you see, is what you get. Come on! Didn't you get past that already? Aren't you educated than that? You primitive butcher. You didn't go to university like me. You didn't go to college. You don't have these wonderful diplomas on the wall. You don't know what life is really about. He's, and he's smashing the butcher. He's smashing him. So the butcher comes back with a line. He says, Doctor, with all your diplomas, and with everything in your intelligence, I understand why you don't have any understanding of Allah Mabba. Because you have no mitzvah. So you're not going there anyways. But me, I have plenty of mitzvah and I want to get there. So I'm going to shul. I'm going to pray minchan arbit. When the doctor heard that, he lost it. He said, yeah, I don't need you. I don't need olam haba. I don't need your mitzvah. You want my olam haba? You can have it. You want to buy it? I'll sell it to you for a ruble. The butcher said, you're going to sell me your olam haba? He says, yeah, for a ruble you can have it. The butcher says, I'll take it. I will take it for a ruble. <laughs> I'll take it. The butcher clicks open the cashier. Cashier? Cash machine, whatever you call it, the register. Pulls out a ruble, walks up, Hands the doctor, shakes on it. Your Olam Haba belongs to me. Doctor, smart. Your ruble belongs to me. And with those words, they part. He locks up the store. He goes to Minchan Arbit. And the doctor goes on his many, merry way. Let's fast forward the story 25 years. 25 years later, the doctor passes away. He dies. And uh, the next day, a very well-dressed woman comes walking into the butcher shop. And at first they, you know, trade pleasantries. 
And then the butcher says to the woman, you know, I've never seen you here in my store. How can I help you? She says, well, that's exactly why I'm here today. You see, my husband was the late doctor here in town. He just passed away. And last night, I had such a horrifying dream. And it, 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 was, it, was, it was nail-biting. It was nail-biting. And I saw my husband standing in front of the Bedin in heaven. And they started going through his books. And they realized that after weighing out everything he did in his life, he didn't have too much merit. So they were deciding what to do with him. And then they decided, they're sending him to Gehenna. But not just Gehenna. They're sending him to the worst of the worst of Gehenna. We know you're here. We're sending him to the worst of the worst to get him. And my husband started screaming to the Bedin, wait one second. But I did so many mitzvot. What do you mean? You know how many people I cured and I didn't take money from them? You know how much chesed I did with people in my medical field? I saved lives. Do you get a bigger mitzvah than that? And I didn't take money. Where, 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 where's my Allah Abba? And the Bedin said to him, Oh, your Allah Abba? You sold it to the butcher 25 years ago for a ruble. What? No way! I mean, yeah, you're right, I did, but come on! I mean, that, that wasn't real. And Bedin says, No. You sold it for a ruble. You shook on it. You took the the money, and you spent it. You sold it. You have no olam haba, nothing. You're going straight to Gehinam. She says at that moment, she heard her husband screaming and yelling and screaming. And she says, I woke up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. It was the worst nightmare I've ever had. She says, I, 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 I don't know what to make of it. I figured, ah, bad dream. She says, I went back to sleep. She says, oh, suddenly, I get another dream. My husband comes to me, and he's shaking me in the bed, and he's screaming on the top of his lungs, go to the butcher tomorrow, take a ruble, give it back to him, and get me the olam haba back. You have no idea where they're about to send me. They're about to send me to a place that in your wildest dreams, just to think about such a place, you would pass away. She says, when I woke up and I heard that, I said, this is crazy. So I figured, you know what? He did mention the butcher. Let me at least check out if there's any merit, if there's any truth to this story. So she says, this morning, right after the funeral was over, after I finished dressed up, I'm coming directly to you from the cemetery. I'm coming straight to you and I'm asking you, is there any truth to this story? Did you have anything to do with my husband, the doctor? Did he sell you his olam haba for a ruble? I mean, come on, who would do that? And the butcher said, yes, every word is true. I remember it like yesterday. She says, what? You mean this just wasn't a nightmare? No, this is real. So she says, my gosh, that means he's really going through what he's going through upstairs, something, or maybe downstairs, something horrible. She pulls a ruble out and she says to the butcher, please, take the ruble back. Give my husband his olam haba back. The butcher looks at the lady and says, listen, I feel for your husband, but I'll tell you the truth. Like he's a doctor. I'm a businessman. I am not giving you back the Olam Haba for a ruble. Matter of fact, I'm not giving you the Olam Haba back at all. It was probably the best buy I've ever done in my life. And now that you're telling me that the dream went where he stood in front of the Bedin and screamed that he saved so many people's lives 
And he has these huge mitzvot that he did in his life, and he didn't even charge them money for it. I am definitely not giving you the ruble back. That belongs to me. That's mine. Now, I'm the guy who saved all those people's lives without taking a penny. How ironic, I'm a butcher. <laughs> no deal. She said, but what do you mean? You have to. He says, no, I don't. We made a deal. We shook on it. I don't have to do nothing. She says, I'll offer you a hundred ruble. He says, not for sale. I'll offer you a thousand ruble. Not for sale. Not for sale. No, you can't. Olam haba, come on. A thousand ruble, come on. No, not for sale. To save one life, I wouldn't sell the Olam haba for a thousand ruble. He spent a lifetime saving people's lives. Now that's mine. And I bought it, and it was the best deal I've ever did in my life, and I'm not selling it back. No. That night, this woman goes home. She has nothing to do. She goes to sleep. Her husband comes to her again the next night in a dream and is shaking her and literally choking her in the bed and screaming. If he doesn't want to sell me back to Lababa, then you take him to Bedin, take him to the rabbi. He has to sell me back to Lababa. They're about to drop me into the biggest and worst Mahadura in the in Gehenam, and I'm going to be there for infinity and beyond. Yeah. Literally. Take him to bed deep. The next morning she wakes up in a cold sweat. She goes running to the butcher shop, and she tells him, my husband came back again this night. He was choking me, he was screaming, he was crying, he was begging on the top of his lungs. He wants me to take you to Bedin. I'm taking you to the Radvaz. And she goes running to the rabbi's house. And she says to the rabbi, Rabbi, this is what's going on. This is what happened with my husband. He sold his olam haba for a ruble to the butcher. This is what happened in last night's dream in front of Bedin Shomala. This is what happened Last night, when he told me that if that's the case, I'm going to take him to a Bedin, i got to take him to the Ridvaz. Rabbi, my husband needs you to save him. you got to get him his Olam Abba back. The Ridvaz says, wow. Okay, if that's the case, tomorrow afternoon, we're going to make a court case. We're going to set aside a chair for the neshama of your husband, he's going to appear in front of me in court, and I'm going to make a court case between him, your deceased husband, and the butcher who went through this transaction of the selling of his olam haba. And that's what took place. And when the buzz came around the city of Slutsk, and everyone heard that the court case was about to commence between the butcher and the dead doctor, you can imagine the buzz. Everybody, I'm talking, everybody shut their stores and everyone showed up to the courthouse, the Bedin of the Radvaz. And the Radvaz stands up and he adjourns the court and on one side sits the butcher and on the other side an empty chair for the Nishama of the doctor. And the wife is sitting next to that empty chair. And the case begins, and the Radvaz says out to the public for everyone to hear what took place. And after he goes through the details, explaining how after the doctor mocked the butcher for going to Minchan Arbit, and degraded him and put him down, and the butcher told him, what do you mean? I'm not worried about Parnassah, that's from God. I'm worried about my relationship with Hashem, my Olam Haba. And the doctor put it down and he said, Ha, Olam Abba, what's that? And he sold it. The butcher bought it for a ruble. And now, after he passed away, Shemayim doesn't let him in. We're going to have a court case and figure out who's right and is this transaction proper. The Ravah stands up and he announces everybody in the room, I need 30 minutes to deliberate and I'll be back after deliberations, and I'll tell you my psak. 
The Radvaz goes to a back room, and just then the whole courtroom bursts out in a stitch of roar. People are yelling and screaming, give it back, don't give it back. No, he was religious. He was religious. And the whole town took sides and was in this court case. Exactly 30 minutes, the Radvaz comes out from the inner chamber. He sits in the place of the Dayan. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, my decision has three parts to it. There are three parts to my psak. So don't jump until you hear all three. Part number one, says the Radvaz, the sale that the doctor sold his olam haba to the butcher is null and void, batel. The widow, when she heard this, she jumped up. Thank you, Hashem. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Hashem. My husband's going to get his olam haba back. The Ridvaz went on to explain. He said, Olam Abba is not something tangible. Olam Abba is non-transferable. It's not something that you can actually say, here it is. And because of that, it's not something that a Kinyan can actually transfer from one person to the next. So the first step of his Psaq, Psachelix, part number one, Part number one was the sale, null and void. But part number two, says the Ritvaz, is that although the sale is null and void and the butcher doesn't get the doctor's olam haba, but the doctor himself also doesn't get his olam haba, he lost his olam haba. Why? Because when you degrade something, and you put it down, and you shame it, and you make it as nothing, then the fact, yeah, 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 I got it. When you degrade something and make it as nothing, it cannot come back and help you in any which way. And we have many places in Torah that proves this point, that something that was degraded, the famous example they say, Later on in the life of David Amelech, his clothing wouldn't keep him warm. And the reason was, is because that famous moment when he snuck up behind King Shaul in the cave and he ripped his royal garment just to demonstrate to him that he came close enough that he could have actually hurt him to show him that he's not here to hurt him. Because if he wanted to, he really could have taken him out. But because David was mivazeh, the clothing of the king, Years later, when David was king, his clothing could not help him in return. When you're mevazeh something, that item can never come back to help you in return. This doctor, says the Ritvaz, was mevazeh olam haba. And if that's the case, he loses it. That's step two of his psak. So step one is, the shochet doesn't get it non-transferable. But step two is that the doctor doesn't get Olam Abba either because he degraded Olam Abba. But then step three, says the Ritvaz, he says that this court case is one of the greatest Kiddush Hashem of this decade. Because everybody in the town came out to hear this fight and court case and now, until now, before this case, people weren't thinking about Olam Haba. People didn't even give Olam Haba a second thought. People didn't understand how important the concept of Olam Haba is and what it means to have a spiritual relationship that starts in this world and then continues into the next world with Hashem for eternity. After this court case... Because people heard the story of how this doctor literally yelled and screamed dream after dream, night after night. Now people realize that Olam Haba is the bigger point of this world. This world is just a prusdor. This world is just a hallway to get to the bigger feast, the room that we're trying to get to, the world of Olam Haba. Now people are going to take it seriously. After this court case, people are going to see that Olam Haba is real. And in the Zechut, 
that the doctor had to go through this terrible pain and the dreams of coming to his wife and calling for this court case and being the farsem to the entire city and later on to the world, that Olam Haba is everything. He says, now people are going to take Olam Haba seriously. And the doctor gets a zechut to inspire so many people that it's time to take your eye off of what doesn't mean anything and stop putting your eye on what means everything. For that zechut, the doctor gets tremendous Olam Haba. And that's the final psak of the Red Vaz. Wow. What a court case. <laughs> what a court case. What a rendering. What a psak. Gentlemen, listen to this. When we say that somebody is ben olam haba, you know what that means? That means that he's living in this world with a relationship with Hashem moment to moment that's bigger than just the simple, modern, simple ways of this world. Instead of just living a materialistic relationship, give me more, give me more, give me more, he's living a relationship that has to it the spiritual side to it, a connection in a loving way. That's a ben olam haba, somebody that's connected to Hashem, already on an Olam Haba level, even in Olam Hazer. To be able to appreciate this idea, this is where Rabbi Itzla wants to give his great answer of how come Rosh Hashanah comes before Yom Kippur. And he says literally something that Rabbi Tai, if you hear this, it opens up your heart. Says Rabbi Itzla, people get so tied into this world that they forget that there's anything else. And all they think and all they care about is just the physical size of pleasures of this world and nothing else. Sorry. And they're so taken by all the physicality and everything that this world has to offer, they don't think of anything beyond physical. So says Rabbi Tzula Hashem did us a chesed. And he gave the judgment of the world of physical first. Rosh Hashanah. The day that's going to judge how much money you're going to make this year. How healthy you're going to be this year. How many times you're going to enjoy yourself this year. How much simchat hachayim you're going to have this year. Hashem did that just so that you will start the high holidays with him and you'll show up to Yom Adin because that's a judgment you're worried about. You're worried about how much money I'm going to make. You're worried about how healthy I'm going to be. You're worried about what type of good or God forbid not good year you're going to have. And in your mind, you're thinking good and not good only according to the physical size of the pleasures of what this world and this year, this year has to offer. Says Rabbi Tzalah, Hashem gives you Rosh Hashanah first to draw you in. Come out to me. I'm going to judge you on the thing that you care about first. So that you'll show up. And once we bonded on that day of the physical judgment, then maybe, maybe, you'll stick around with me another few days and want to invest a little deeper into what that relationship was really meant to be. Deeper than skin. Not just a physical relationship, but a spiritual relationship. And you'll stick around to Aseret Yimei Teshuvah, which will lead up to the real day. Yom Kippur, the day that's going to forgive you of the Averro, that will get you a relationship of a loving, spiritual connection to Hashem, this world and the next world. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.